Hey everybody, it's Matthew Rathman, and I have a cool trick that you can use using Google Maps. So you could create a map with different layers, like your favorite riding trails or hiking trails in your community, your favorite restaurants um, or other places of entertainment or so much more. And these uh, maps can be embedded in your website or shared by a link. This is a great tool for that. So let's take a minute and let me show you how to use it. So as promised, I wanted to talk for a moment about uh, Google Maps and ways you can use them a little differently to help your clients navigate your area and to promote yourself and just be a better resource. And um, sounds like a good time, by the way, while you're listening, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Join my channel. I put out a lot of content and be happy for you to follow along. All right. So here I have built on my uh, consumer facing website, a um, community page. So I have a community guide they can download that I created in Canva. We'll do something about that in other videos, service providers. And then you scroll down a little bit here and I have installed or embedded a map on my website that has different locations around town that I like. And so this serves to answer two questions. One, um, if somebody is on Facebook and goes, eh, we're thinking about a special occasion, we'd like to go to a restaurant tonight, I can go, hold on, go to my website here and I can share that in social media and go to go to my website. I have created a map of things to do around my area, around Fredericksburg. And so here you can see I've got bike trails, hiking trails, historical maps, uh, entertainment for the family, uh, parks uh, all bookmarked, and of course, restaurants. And you can see that's all here. And if folks are going to my website, they can go straight to this embedded Google map, see the restaurants I've set up click on one and it's going to pop up with information about that restaurant and feedback and uh, reviews and everything that they need here to make a decision whether this is a good place to go. For me personally, I'm trying really hard to stick only with locally owned uh, companies and not franchises. A, I think it gives a, a taste, quote unquote, um, of the community here in which I live and I'm promoting. B, I think local business people appreciate this. I've actually uh, shared a favorite restaurant here only to have the business owner happen to be following me on Facebook as well, and they will go and uh, thank me for liking this. Plus, I do reviews on all of these. So if a consumer or friend or family member asks for family review and or a restaurant review for their family, and I have done a review on here, they'll see that I'm active in my community giving feedback on this. And then they can also go here to the map and they can expand this and see all the restaurants and sites here and they can see where they're all mapped out and say this is closer to where I am and they can click on it and get information there as well. So lots of cool things about this. Now we're gonna do this by going to mymaps.google.com and when you get there, and again, this is all just part of having access to Google. So if you have a Gmail account, you have these things. Um, you can see that I've got the favorite spots, which I just showed you, and I've got a different map here. This one is outlining all the 55 and older communities, at least the ones that I have any familiarity with, within my area right here. So again, if I'm working with a client who's helping a family member move, or they, the client themselves are looking for retirement communities, adult living communities, I can just share the link and go, well, here they are, and you can go click on them and get some information and reviews about each one of these, plus you can see the location and it's all interactive. Google Google's kind of done the work for me to provide to the clients and be the source of the source in which they research these things further. So let's talk about how we set it up and then how we share it. So I'm going to do how we share it first. Uh, I showed you a moment ago how I created the map, right? One of these two maps here. And then there's these three dots here that I can copy the map to make a new one. I can open a tab, I can trash it, or I can go into it by clicking the map, go to share, and then I want to enable the link for do public, make it public, and then copy this group here. And this information here allows me to go and embed it in my website. Now, all of you have different websites and they're varied in types and how you embed things, but you'll need to go figure out your individual website and how do you embed something. But this is the content you need to make that happen. So for example, I use WordPress, I just edit the page, copy and paste this in the HTML section and boom, there it is. If you're using something like Squarespace, it's actually easier. They'll just ask for the link and then it'll embed it on the website on Squarespace. So pretty cool, pretty easy. Uh, if you don't know how to do it, check with your website manufacturer or uh, designer. They'll easily tell you how to get this on there or do it for you. But this is where you'll get that source contact. 
So let's quickly go through how we're going to make this map. So I'm going to go here and create, create a new map. And it's going to take a second and give me the map of the United States. And I'm going to search for um, restaurants, just like you're doing a regular search. And I misspelled restaurants, but it doesn't matter because uh, Google's awesome like that. So I'm going to go and just zoom in here to where this is. And it gave me a bunch of local maps here to choose from. Now down here on the next level, you'll see this is a entitled the layer, an uh, unentitled layer. So I'm going to go ahead and title this restaurants. I recommend. And apparently I just can't spell restaurants today, but that's okay. I'm going to hit save. And now I've created what they call a layer. And so each one of these layers is going to help me out. So I can create a new layer and go and rename that. Thank goodness I was able to spell parks. And then I'm going to go look, and this is my search results. So let's say Orofino, which is a great restaurant, comes up. I like that. Notice here it says add to map. So I'm going to click. Notice that this area down here with parks is a little grayer than this section up here. I'm going to go click on this layer. See that blue line moved? And I can just add to map and it's going to add it to the map. It turns it blue. And let's say I'm going to look for parks in Fredericksburg, Virginia. I'm going to go search for parks. I'm going to click down here, make this bar blue because that's my layer with parks. There's Alum Springs, which is good. I'm going to click on add to map and it added it to this map here. Now, if you do this and you have a lot of, of locations, they're all just going to be blue dots, which doesn't really correlate to what you want to do here. So what I want to do is go over here where it says parks in Fredericksburg click these three dots for the layer options, and I can rename it, I can delete it, or I can open the data table, and I could do some bigger descriptions. I could write my own descriptions here if I wanted to. I don't, I just rely on Google's descriptions, but I do wanna highlight one of the locations I've added to this layer, click on the paint bucket, and I'm gonna change colors for each layer to make it easier for them to see. And then I'm just gonna go ahead there and then after I've chosen the color, I'm going to go to individual styles and it's going to ask me, what do I want? Do I want them all look the same or sequence of numbers, individual styles or style by data column, which is what I showed you earlier. Again, I don't do that much detail. I'm just going to let the review stand for their own. If you want to get all fancy, you can go ahead and put that in there. I'm going to just click on sequence of numbers because I find that the uh, numbers here catch their eye better. So I've chosen blue for restaurants. I'm going to go choose Sure, orange. And now I've got restaurants. So again, I'm going to go look for more parks in Fredericksburg. Do a search there. Here comes all this, the little drop pins. Notice that my list over here has stayed the same. Um, I need to change that color. There we go. I'm going to again choose the park tab. And then I've got parks here around town. I look, oh, yep, her camp's a good park. I'm just going to add that. It automatically added number two, corresponded to the map. And then I'm going to go choose Old Mill. That's a good park too. I'm going to add that. And I start to build the maps that I think are valuable, the bike trails, the restaurants, whatever. And then you just keep adding to your done. And the cool part is it saves it automatically. So I'm not going to spend time, you know, having to hit save and whatever. Whenever I add something or delete it, so let's say a restaurant shuts down or... I grow out of love with it. I can just remove it easily. I'm going to call this Matthew's Favorites. I can add a description to it. I hit save. And now I've got the ability to uh, share this map other ways as well. So um, I can go preview it just to see what the map looks like. And here's my map with the parks. There, see there are, there's one, there's two, um, and then there's a number three up here, an old mill. Um, and this is what the consumer is going to see. The person who I shared this with is going to see when I hit preview. I can go ahead and share it. And again, I can go here and get a link. 
and I've copied the link here and I can have that in an email I share or I can go share just the link to Facebook if I don't want to push back my page. I personally like embedding this because when they come back to my page to see my map for whatever I've added, 55 and older or favorite spots around town, they see all the other content on my page and of course my blog post about the local community. There's more for them to go click on and see. If I just share the map link, then all they see is the map and they, their adventure with me stops there. I get to be known as a person who gave that information, but they don't see the rest of my website, what I do, reasons to subscribe or, or look at other content. So, um, so again, that's up to you, but you can add layers and build out your layers here. You can hit share and one of your two options is to get a link um, or copy a link. If you want to embed it, uh, then you're, what you're going to do is go back to um, the three ellipses up here, the upside down ellipses, click on embed in my site. Oops, I didn't make the site public. So that has to be public like I showed you earlier to do. Um, but then I can go ahead and embed it in my site and that'll give me that same code I showed you earlier and how to get, and then you can go embed it on your website. So that's it. That's using Google Maps to help build uh, a, a referral base for either local businesses or maps or adventures for the family. Um, this one that I have here is pretty extensive where it's got restaurants and hiking trails and biking trails and all that. I think it's probably better to break them down in the different sections in case somebody just asked for a restaurant or just asked for hiking trails or biking trails or something. Um, they don't get all the other stuff unless that's what you really want to give. The one I embed on my website has everything because it's all lifestyle stuff. So that's the down and dirty for this. I hope that's helpful for you. Good luck. If you have any questions, leave them in the subject line below. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. <music>